appropriate for us to take a look at um, how do we position ourselves. As you notice, the title is this, Putting Ourselves in the Place of Provision. Because I've said in the past, and, and taught on it many times, that there is nothing that you can do. There's nothing that, that you're, and you're serving or giving up. You know, just, there's nothing that you can do that can make God love you more than he does. Yeah. There's nothing that you can do to make him love you more or love you less. Because the scriptures tell us that when we were still his enemy and sinners... God so loved us that he sent his only begotten son that we, we may be his. And he calls us his treasure. That you are someone's treasure? I mean, the girls dream of some, some pimply faced boy one day coming up going, you're my treasure. Well, <laughs> that's how God sees you in whatever state that you're in. But there is a teaching, and it says that, that there's provision. There's a place of provision. And the place of provision uh, that, God, that we're going to teach on today, and we're not talking about a, a gospel, uh, a, pri, a prosper, uh, prosperity gospel here. But the Bible does say that there is a place of provision in the Bible. And it, tells us, and, and it tells us in the Bible where that place is, and we're going to look at it today. Because I want us to get ourselves in that place of provision. Provision, it means being provided for in the future. The future provision, okay? And if we put ourselves in that place, now there are going to be some people who are, is going to get a huge provision. God can make you very successful. But I want you to know, instead of envying that person, that person's under a test, according to the Bible, is it because too much has been given what? Much is required. That's a test. Some of you think, oh, that's a blessing. That's a test. Much is required of you if he's given you much provision? Wow. Your hand has to remain open. So I hope the Lord tests all of us with that. That he can so see in our heart that says, that one's going to be faithful. I can give him much because he's faithful. And it's a test. It's a test. So you know, Philippians 4, 4, 19, I put it, it says, and my God will meet all your needs according to his riches in glory. Someone is not going without if you get more because it's coming from the Lord. So it's, it's, it's important that we have the right attitude and towards those. So what we want to look at is coming next month, as they mentioned it in the announcements, is the 21-day fast. And you say, why 21 days? Well, in the book of Daniel, we see Daniel fasted for 21 days, and there's been a lot of people who've written books, you know, how to get healthier. Um, we're not saying to do a Daniel fast, but we're saying that putting ourselves in a position to, to receive, because the scriptures, in fact, it was Jesus who taught this, that you put yourself in this position, and one of the positions of blessing is those who fast. And a fast, there's different blessings, there's different rewards that come from fasting. And so you can't always, you know, just claim it here. What it is, is we've been told to fast. Fast something, to deny the flesh. See, the flesh is at, is, is at battle with the Lord, the things that God wants us to do. And whenever you, you fast something, you just kind of step onto God's side a little bit. <laughs> you know, I am, I am putting to death what I hunger for, for the purpose of possibly hearing God, of getting stuff out of my life. So this, these are the dates. It starts the second, doesn't start the first, 
you know, there's, there's too much football and things going on. And <laughs> so we, we have purposely done it on the second. But let's take a look at why fasting. Why fasting? And th- this whole teaching, we're, we're going we're gonna to hit on a, a few things. It comes from the book of Matthew chapter 6 is, is the real text. And they call it the Beatitudes. But the Beatitudes is Jesus teaching us what it is to be a Christian. You know, a lot of times you go, well, I'm a Christian because, you know, I, I accepted the work of the cross. It's, no, well, Jesus is teaching here, you know, the, the constitution, the rules, the way that you live once you've made that decision. Has anyone ever read the, uh, one of those books, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, computer, you know, book for dummies? Like, yeah. Wh- which one did you read? They have them for mechanics. They have them for... Electronics. Who's ever read one of those books? Oh, you're a dummy? No, no, <laughs> no, no. But you know, if I was, it is it really. This is this is Christianity for <laughs> people saying, "I don't know how to live the life." I go read chapter six of Matthew. It's the Beatitudes, and it's three things. It's three things, and we're going to discuss really two of them. It's <clears throat> well, we'll get to them. It's giving, prayer, and fasting. That's the Christian life. That's the Beatitudes. It's giving, prayer, and fasting. Let's look at Matthew 6. Matthew 6, 13. It says, if you decide to fast, if you feel like fasting, I highly suggest that you fast. It's talking about a way of life. This is the way, it's supposedly the way of life. And I know there's some people who have medical problems. You know, it's in the Daniel fast. Daniel, he fasted meat and sugar. Everything fun. He only ate veggies. He only ate like, and I only, you know, I only eat things that eat veggies like cow. You know, (laughs) So I'm, I'm a second-tier vegetarian. <laughs> There's first tier, and I'm second tier. I eat what eats veggies. So <laughs> I just have to make that connection. Not if you fast. And I want you to know, this is a kingdom lifestyle. If you want to be a part of the kingdom, Jesus is saying, here's how to be in the kingdom lifestyle there's fasting. You may you want in, in this 21 day. We're not do it, saying doing a Daniel fast. Medically, some people can't do something like that. But you can fast what you crave for: coffee, a caffeine, desserts. Some of you beer, wine. I don't know something that you really you're gonna sit down going, oh no. I've given this up to tell the Lord that he is worth it. I want to get this distraction out of my life. This is something that I'm consecrated to for 21 days. He comes first, not my flesh. And that's what it, that, that, that's what it boils down to. We're saying, Lord, you are worthy. You are worthy. I don't live by bread and water, but by your very word. You are the one who supplies all my needs. I turn to you first. And you know what? When you're giving up, you say you're giving up something and it's just so natural to you. Just when you go to reach for it, you go to think about it, you're going, no, I, see at that moment, I am making the decision that I prefer God being first. That's fasting. A constant acknowledgement that though I crave it, no, God is first. You are first in my life. 
the wonderful thing is, is there's a blessing that comes with it. See, too often, too often we think when we don't hear God, we, we go like, I, I, I don't think I, I feel God anymore. I, I, I don't sense anymore the blessing. We, we want to turn to this condemnation thing. Says, what have I done wrong? What am I doing wrong? Well, let me tell you, there's a whole list. There's a list like this. Okay. And we, you can live this entire life. You can get up every morning going, oh, what I'm not doing. And we, we have this condemnation spirit always around us, what we're not doing. Oh, I'm not being blessed by God because, you know, my flesh wants this. I want you to know it's not so much that as much as it is, what are you not doing? See, we want to go, what, what am I, you know, doing wrong? What are you not doing Right? And I'm telling you, for most of the church, it's fasting. It says, you want a reward? If you want, the, if you want to follow the Constitution that Jesus is teaching, it says, you give, you pray, and you fast. And that's the exact order it is in chapter 6. That's it? Yeah. So, right now, I, I, I just... It's, if I can just take a spiritual night, for those of you who live under condemnation, that you don't think you hear God, or you're not doing this because of something you're doing wrong, let me introduce to change your mind and start doing something that's right. Doing something that's more that God says to do, because there's more in there that he says to do than he says to stop. And we, we're just built that way to condemn, 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 condemn. And God, in, in his, the blessing book that he's, 66 books he's given, it says, do this, do this, do this. And it, it, it's a change of our, it'll change the atmosphere. Wow. When you fast, do... <laughs> Now, let me make this clear because some people have read it wrong. It says, it says do, do not look somber. Now, some people say they've read it. It says, do not look sober. So, hey, well, like I can take care of that. No, somber and sober are two different words. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, don't, don't be pitiful, you know. Do not look somber as the hypocrites do. For they disfigure their faces. You know, it's kind of like your husband when he doesn't get his way. <laughs> Disfigures his face. What's wrong, honey? To show others that they are fasting. I tell you, they have received their reward in full. It's talking about rewards. You know, there's a reward for doing it the wrong way. That's it. This face is your reward. The people think, oh, he's spiritual. Look how sad he is. <laughs> you know, people think, oh, he must be a Christian. He's so sad. You know, he fasts all the time. You can look at me. He said, he doesn't fast at all. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm just trying to look happy. So, <laughs> Okay. And I told myself I wasn't going to do these little things. We're going to go straight through the message. Be serious. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put, on oil, put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your Father who is unseen. And your Father who sees what is done in secret will what? That's a place of provision, not prosperity. You're going to get a reward. I don't put myself in that place. Jesus is saying this. Fasting isn't about looking spiritual. Fasting is being spiritual with rewards. Now, it's okay, you know, if you're in a small group, you know, and they go, one of the questions, they're like, are you, are, do you plan to fast? No, no. We're not talking about keeping it a secret from your wife. 
you know, or, or somebody that you're spiritually connected with. It's the guy walking around going, oh, I can't wait till this 21 days is over. You know, you don't go to work, tell her when you're fasting, and they go, what's that? You know, that's not your witness. <laughs> People say, well, I don't want to look like that. Wow. Fasting doesn't move God, it moves you. You're not moving God. He can't love you anymore. He did his best. He sent his son to die for you, that you become his treasure. Wow. It moves you. So you go in there and say, you know what? I'm not doing this. Lord, look at me. I've given up chocolate for a week. Now I'm going to move the God of all the universe because I am not eating Tootsie Rolls. Who the crap are you? I've seen it. I've done it. I'm giving up Coke for lunch. <laughs> I'm going to move the hand of the creator. <laughs> it unclutters your life. It just unclutters it. It constantly reminds you we're in need to hear from God. It's interesting to be, you know, we, we have this teaching in, in Matthew chapter 6, you know, starting, you know, the very beginning of chapter. And it says, look, you need to be a giver. You need to pray. You need to fast. And with those three things, then the result is verse 33 of chapter 6. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. How do we do that? Giving, prayer, fasting. That is seeking his righteousness. And then what does it say? And all these things will be given. Provision. You're putting yourself in the place of provision. Instead of just spouting off, seek ye first. You haven't got a scooby what seek ye first is if you didn't read the first part of the chapter. You give. You pray. You fast. The 101 of Christianity life. The 101. That's seeking the first. All things will be given to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of itself. Wow. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Isn't that the truth? Wow. Jesus builds the foundation. He builds the foundation of all is provided by those three things, lifestyle. That's it. Get rid of what, well, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. How about do more what is right and out of those three things? Do one of those three things or all three more and I guarantee you what you're condemning yourself over will disappear. Because one of them, fasting, deals with it. Fasting deals with that thing that's got you. It says fasting can free you. It can deliver you from temptation. Here's some of the things. Well, here's the foundation. We said giving, prayer, and fasting. But here's the things that fasting does according to the Bible. It gives guidance. People, I don't know what to do, fast. Well, I'm not too sure I'm up to that level of commitment. You know. You want guidance? Fast. In fact, telling you to fast is giving you guidance. Well, I don't know if I can fast. It's like you can't take guidance. You're not going to get it. It loosed the bands of wickedness and temptation. 
brings deliverance or protection, minister to the needs of us. You know, it says, listen, here's what, when you're fasting, if whatever you're fasting, give it to those who need it. If you're fasting food, just don't keep it in the pantry. It's going, I'll have that in 21 days. <laughs> Go give it to someone who doesn't have it. It's like, well, I'll just, I'll just hoard it up. <laughs> you know, I'm going to lose five pounds, and there it is in the pantry. <laughs> wow. Whew. Expresses our grief for those of you who have lost a loved one. You couldn't eat, could you? Fasting is an expression of grief. If there's something that really makes you sad, fast. Feel the pain. Feel that every time you hunger for it, you're reaching out and you know you need God. And it's only God who is going to minister to that loss in your life. Strengthens our prayers and prayer life. Fasting, prayer, and giving. Let me switch to giving. We know prayer is important because everybody goes, what's the most important thing? Prayer. You know, I'm not going to teach on prayer. Talk about the two, the two things like, well, I'm not too sure I'm at a level of giving or fasting yet, but I can pray. Lord, give me more. You know. <laughs> Going the wrong way there, I think. <laughs> yes? Okay. I'll remember to tell him that, Lord. <laughs> giving. There's a truth about giving. If you read the scriptures, whenever you see giving, it's always tied to what the Bible calls first fruits. First fruits is, is, is incredible. The first, you know, when you gain this, have you, uh, Cain and Abel, you know, they were, gave back after their first fruits. Well, Cain just said, ah, you know, let's throw a couple apples in there. And Abel, Sacrifice his firstborn. And it was, it, the reason is it's reflective of what Jesus, Jesus sacrificed his firstborn. He's the first of many, according to Romans. He's the first of many to come. He was, and it calls him in Romans, the first fruit. People go, well, now which was the good one, Cain or Abel? Cain or Abel? Remember, Cain was not Abel. So, um, I study Christianity for dummies. I know that book. So uh, it was the first fruits then. And throughout the scriptures, we constantly keep seeing this truth about first fruits. Um, and and you know, if it's, it's throughout the Old Testament, uh, and let's go to the New Testament. Do you know the Sabbath was on Saturday? And it still is for some denominations. Jesus rose from the dead when? On the first day of the week because he was the first fruit. See how it continues? When the apostle Paul was telling him to take up an offering, he says, the first day of the week, go and receive the offering. There's a truth about first fruits. That it's the first it is saying that I recognize that everything I have belongs to you, Lord. So you know what? In faith, I can give you the first fruit. Of, I don't know if it was last year, but in years past, the first Sunday of the month, and it takes faith, you know, Crystal and I will give my first week's paycheck as the first fruits. We can do it. I have a big pantry. I catch a lot of fish. We're not going to starve. That is something you have to settle in your heart. How are you going to honor God? Because you've been giving on Sunday. That's every Sunday is your first. This is my first fruit of the week. Now you know why you do it on Sunday. People say, oh, you, you don't have church on the Sabbath. No, I have church on the first day of the week. I honor the Lord with my first fruits. January is the first month. My wife and I, we will give 
what we decided to give the first Sunday of January. And we're going to offer it to the Lord as our first fruit. We are going to have uh, the last Sunday of the month after the fast, the last Sunday of the month, some of you, I might just, I'm just suggesting what the Lord says, or you come in agreement with, you know, your, your mate, um, to maybe not tithe all thir- uh, January, just so you can have this huge amount of money. And go, I'm writing it. I say, Lord, this is our first fruits. Just to push, just to, to, to push your faith and to show the Lord, said, Lord, you can entrust me with a lot because I'm going to keep my hand open. But God blesses the first fruits. Even though you did, you've probably most of you didn't know why we meet on Sunday, why we give on Sunday. Some of you are online. Most of you give online. We'll just mark it for a Sunday. You know? <laughs> but God blesses the first fruit. That's the faith giving. You, know, you say, well, what did we get paid last week? No. What do we want to get paid next week? First fruits. First fruits. Lord, it's all yours. And here's how I know. I'm giving you before you give it to me. There's a truth about the first fruit. And which it lines up, whatever you put first in your life prioritizes and organizes the rest of your life. What you do first you know, some people say, well, I'll serve the Lord once I get my profession. I'll serve the Lord once I graduate college. What? You know what? You're just saying what you do first, prioritize the rest of your life. Your profession will always be before the Lord. Well, I'll give once I buy a house. Your money will always be before your first fruits. You're saying what I put first in my life prioritizes the rest of my life. And there's some people, I'm not organized at all. The Lord, if he were first, you'd have some organization to your life. I, I know that this sounds, may sound simple, but brilliance is taking something that's difficult and making it simple. I mean, I can make this very difficult. We can read from Exodus. We can do all this. We can do it. But it's not. Whatever you put first. You know, people get up first thing in the morning. What do they do? Oh, gosh. The day I'm going to have today. Uh, <laughs> you just prioritize. It's going to be misery. It's going to be stressful. Instead of good, you, do, you just need to put all these little postums and stickets, you know, stickers all around going, praise the Lord. You know, God, God is sufficient. So you get up in the morning going, God is sufficient. Oh, yeah. You know, instead of going, oh, crap. You know, the, the first thing you do, the beginning of the year, and not just the beginning of the year, the first of the week, and not just the first of the week, the first of the day. In Exodus, it says to take the first animal born to you and dedicate it to the Lord. We're going to do that today. We're going to minister to all the first that have not been blessed and and consecrated to the Lord. Wow, I want to move. I, I don't want to, to linger on some of this stuff. I want to get to the blessing part. So do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things. And your heavenly father knows that you need them. First things first. The first thing, seek ye first. How do I do that? Giving, prayer, fasting. Do that first. And all is provided. 
all is provided. You wake up in the morning. And I just put, I went down to this. I just did it again, but I just put it on a day schedule. Whatever you put first in your day prioritizes and organizes the rest of your day. It's a natural. If it's a priority, sure, you got things you got to get done at work. Sure, you got to meet this quota. Sure, you got to do that. But what did you wake up in the morning saying, oh, crap, it's going to be a long day? Instead of going, oh, Lord, I'm thankful that you're with me. And you can be honest, it's going to be a long day, but you come first. Thank you, Lord. Be with me, Lord. Get me through this, Lord. Instead of thinking about how strong you have to be, I got to put up with all this guy. First fruits are throughout the scriptures. Christ being the first raised from the dead, the first fruit of those who have fallen asleep, according to Corinthians 15, 20. All of chapter 15 speaks of Christ being the first fruit. In James 1.18, it says, He chose to give us birth through the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruit of all he created. He's calling us first fruit. Let me put small group questions up while I make my plea. And now, <clears throat> this is for those who you may be the first person in your family that has accepted the fullness of the gospel. You're really walking to God's word. You're a type of a first fruit. If possibly you grew up in a family that your father or mother wasn't aware of such things and you were the firstborn. The Bible says, let the firstborn come forward. If you've not been consecrated to the Lord as a first fruit, given back. Because the Bible says that like Jesus is once he was the first fruit, it says all those that follow walk in that blessing. Someone has to be the first fruit. Is it you? Are you the first one in the family that said, I'm the first in this family that walks righteous? Are you the first born in a family and possibly your parents didn't know to consecrate you to the Lord and say, this is the first fruit, Lord. I give this one back to you to do as you wish so that everyone, everyone that follows will be under that blessing. I want to ask us, everyone to stand right now. And if that applies to you, and it doesn't matter if you're male or female, because in Jesus it says, in Christ there's no male nor female. So those of you who are wondering, you know, you're having you know, a gender dysphoria or something, you know, don't worry, just, instead of trying to figure out if you're male or female, just become a Christian because you're neither. <laughs> That's a great answer for them. And it's just become a Christian. Because in Christ, male or female doesn't matter. So it doesn't matter if you're a female and you're the firstborn or the first one to be saved in your family. You're a firstborn and you're willing to be consecrated, to be given to the Lord for his purpose. And everyone after you, your children, your family, comes under that umbrella now, they will stand. I mean, if they're unrighteous, if they're sinners, they come under your umbrella. But the day they die, if they've never accepted Jesus, they're on their own. But in this life, there's a reward for those who stand up and receive the consecration of the firstborn. The firstborn. If you never received it, and you want, because I'm the father of the house, I can give you that blessing. If that's you, come down. If you want it. We're setting things in order. 
for 2021. Wow. Blessing comes, rewards come. So we honor the firstborn. Structure is going to come as we do the, the, the more instead of worrying about what we're doing wrong. Let's be concerned about what is right and let the wrong take care of it. Said, what does it say about tomorrow and all the troubles coming? It'll take care of itself. If you'll just be about what's right. I take condemnation off you. Because you're about what's what needs to be done that's right in your life. Stop letting wrong run, ruin your life. Stop being it be the first thing you think of in the morning. The condemnation is defeated. So, Father, I consecrate, I bless, I give you your firstborn, that they live up to what firstborn is supposed to be about, that brings the protection, the first of the righteous line that follows them for their family, for their business, for those who enter their household, who come under their household, they walk into that umbrella of blessing. Father, here's your first fruits. We honor you and you honor them. Let them receive their reward. Let them be about doing more of what's right than worrying of what, they're done is, what they've done is wrong. We bless, I bless the first fruits. Lineage is starting right now. Lineage, protection and blessing, rewards. In your son's name, who was a first fruit for all of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand.